Hey guys, starting another trivia show here in just a little bit. Hope you're all doing well. Wait for some people to join in, and then we'll get this going. Last week here in Arizona, we had a pretty chilly run of it, but it's always a nice change of pace. Elisa went for a nice little hike today. I took care of some stuff here in the studio, and let's start this show up. Just answer along as I go along. We're going to start real easy. This evening, first question, I hope you all get it pretty quick, is which two NFL teams are playing in the Super Bowl this year? Again, which two NFL teams are playing in the Super Bowl this year? Speaking of football, my Detroit Lions had a interesting trade go down last night. Traded... Stafford for Goff. Nice. It's awesome to hear there's some snow in Prescott. Anywhere up the hill a little bit. Getting a little weather is always nice here in Arizona. Here we just have kind of overcast. And uh, a little chilly. Getting that first question. There you go, Kenny. Well done. What two teams are playing in the Super Bowl this year? Next weekend, that would be. Gonna watch that game myself. Pretty exciting football time of year. Check all that out. Again, that was which two NFL teams are playing in the Super Bowl this year. Hey, Brian, welcome. Kenny, welcome. And Kenny, welcome. All right, that question again was, which two teams are playing in the Super Bowl this year? And that is the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and the Kansas City Chiefs. Next question. Ricketts is caused by a deficiency of what vitamin? Uh, Tom, that's totally understandable. I'm sorry about your loss that I saw. I hope you guys are doing all right. Welcome, Mom. Thanks for hanging out. Again, that next question was, Ricketts is caused by deficiency of what vitamin? Again, thanks for uh, the Jamectomy Studio Sessions providing a little music for us. And you can find that on the Punctiquities page on SoundCloud. Well done, Kenny. Again, that is Ricketts is caused by deficiency of what vitamin? Ray, welcome, my friend. Again, that question was, Ricketts is caused by deficiency of one vitamin. Been doing a lot of work on the studio back here. Cope came over again today, set up some more stuff. Not C, but a good guess. Again, that was Ricketts is caused by deficiency of what vitamin? Ricketts is caused by a deficiency of what vitamin? And the answer is vitamin D. Next question. What is the only vowel 
on a standard computer keyboard that is not on the top line of letters. Welcome, Christina. Again, that was, what is the only vowel on a standard computer keyboard that is not on the top line of letters? Well done, Kenny. Well done, Ray. One of these days you gotta get out to a show again, Ray. When you can. Again, that was, what is the only vowel on a standard computer keyboard? Well done, Kenny. What is the only vowel on a standard computer keyboard that is not on the top line of letters? And the answer is A. Next question. After the US, which country has the most Starbucks locations? Again, after the US, which country has the most Starbucks locations? If anybody's able to tip, it's always appreciated. All the ways to tip are listed around this feed. That question was, after the U.S., which country has the most Starbucks locations? Well done, Ray. Again, that was after the US, which country has the most Starbucks locations? Canada's a good guess, but not that one. That was after the US, which country has the most Starbucks locations? And the answer is China. Next question. What color is the black box on an airplane? Again, what color is the black box on an airplane? Well done, Ray. Well done, Kenny. Again, that was what colors the black box on an airplane. And again, that was, what color is the black box on an airplane? And the answer is orange. This question is kind of timely, so think of recent events. Whose given name was Lawrence Harvey Zeiger? Again, whose given name was Lawrence Harvey 
Zyger. Well done, Kenny. Well done, Ray. Welcome, Amy. Well done, Amy. Again, that question was, whose given name was Lawrence Harvey Zeiger? The answer is Larry King. I was uh, getting some really good information on him. Next question. What was the first company to produce Frisbees? Again, what was the first company to produce Frisbees? Speaking on that last question a little bit, Larry King was basically the first person who did just a few guests, like one or two. People were saying he was kind of the forefather of podcast. Well done, Ray. Again, that question was, what was the first company to produce Frisbees? Disc golf was a big activity I was involved in for quite a while when I lived in Michigan and then also when I got out here to Arizona. Need to get back into that. Again, that was, what was the first company to produce Frisbees? Welcome, David. Well done, David. Again, that was, what was the first company to produce Frisbees, and that was Whammo. Next question. Which famous athlete's nickname was Hammerin' Hank? Again, which famous athlete's nickname was Hammerin' Hank? Done, Kenny. Well done, Ray. Well done, David. Well done, Kenny. Welcome, Eric. Again, that question was which famous athlete's nickname was Hammer and Hank? And the answer is Hank Aaron. Again, that was Hank Aaron. Next question. What does antipasto literally mean? Again, what does antipasto literally mean? <clears throat> when my family used to take us out to pizza at a place called Buddy's way back in the day, I used to love their antipasto. And the question is, what does antipasto literally mean? Not salad. It is a salad. But what does the word literally mean? Well done, David. And that was, what does antipasto literally mean? going to Buddy's back. We used to, we go there every time when we first go back to Michigan too to get that antipasto. And again, the question was, what does antipasto literally mean? And it means before meal. 
Next question. What is the most widely spoken native language in the European Union? Again, what is the most widely spoken native language in the European Union? Not French, but really good guess. Well done, Ray. <coughs> English is a good guess, but no. I would have to think that English is the most spoken language, but not native language. I know that every pilot has to speak English. But again, that question was, what is the most widely spoken native language in the European Union? That was. What's the most widely spoken native language in the European Union? And the answer is German. Next question. Next question. In the movie Star Wars, Elisa, welcome. Thanks for joining, babe. I love you. Next question. In the movie Star Wars, when Leia or Leia first tells Han Solo that she loves him. What is his response? Again, in the movie Star Wars, when Leia or Leia first tells Han Solo that she loves him, what is his response? Well done, Kenny. Well done, Ray. I hope your hike was great, Elisa. I will, we'll talk about it later. I hope you took that trail we like. Again, that was in the movie Star Wars. Not you're my sister. But that is a good guess. A lot of people say, what about Luke? But the question and answer was, in the movie Star Wars, when Leia first tells Han Solo that she loves him, what was his response? He said, I know. Next question. Alcohol is a word derived from which language? Again, alcohol is a word derived from which language? Good. Well done, David. Not Latin, but a good guess, Ray. Again, that was. Alcohol is a word derived from which language? If any of you guys want to subscribe to my YouTube channel, it's Grateful Trivia. I post all the shows after we're done with them here on my YouTube channel. Again, that's Grateful Trivia. And the question again was, alcohol is a word derived from which language? And it comes from the Arabic language. Next question. This one's kind of a Homer question for me. 
What U.S. city was pilot Charles Lindbergh born in? Again, what U.S. city was pilot Charles Lindbergh born in? Well done, Ray. Well done, David. Again, that was what U.S. city was pilot Charles Lindbergh born in. And that was what U.S. city was pilot Charles Lindbergh born in. He was born in Detroit, Michigan, where I hailed from. Next question. What is the largest minority group in the U.S.? Again, what is the largest minority group in the U.S.? Well done, Kenny. Well done, David. Not, not the whites, not the whites. Again, that is, what is the largest minority group in the U.S., and the answer is Hispanics. That could be true, right? Very true. The next question, one of my favorite questions I've come across in quite some time. Name three universities, there are five of them, but name three universities that have produced both a U.S. president and a Super Bowl winning quarterback. Again, name three universities that have produced both a U.S. president and a Super Bowl winning quarterback. Speaking of football, the Detroit Lions made a monster trade. Goff is going to be the new quarterback. Stafford's going to win a Super Bowl in L.A. And Detroit got a couple first-round picks in the third. So let's hope Detroit can turn it around. Well done, David. Well done, Kenny. I got this question from Ray. I decided to use it this week. Thank you, Ray. Mucho gracias. Again, that was name three universities that have produced both a U.S. president and a Super Bowl winning quarterback. I'm wearing the colors of one of the universities. Welcome, Matt Roberts from the UP. Again, that was named three universities that have produ produced both a U.S. president and a Super Bowl winning quarterback. There are five of them.
And that was name three universities that have produced both a U.S. president and a Super Bowl winning quarterback. Here are the five. The University of Michigan with Gerald Ford and Tom Brady. The Naval Academy with Jimmy Carter and Roger Staubach. Stanford with Herbert Hoover and either Jim Plunkett or John Elway. Miami of Ohio with Benjamin Harris, Harrison and Ben Roethlisberger. And Delaware just joined those four with Joe Biden and Joe Flacco. Just reading through that, I found it interesting that the first name of the president and the quarterback were the same for Miami of Ohio and Delaware. Interesting. Next question. I found this one just fascinating. And it's for last weekend, not this weekend, because I didn't have the numbers yet. What was the top movie at the box office last weekend? So some people are still going to movies. And this one clocked $2 million last weekend. What was the top movie at the box office last weekend? Last night we watched a new, uh, not news of the world. I do want to see that though. We watched, uh, began a show called Sharp Objects that was pretty good. I will continue to watch that with Elisa. And again, that question was, what was the top movie at the box office last weekend. It only made $2 million, which is very, very not that much for a movie at the box office. Again, that was, what was the top movie at the box office last weekend? And it was The Marksman, and it made $2 million. Next one. In which country was processed cheese invented? Again, in which country was processed cheese invented? I'll tell you what. Processed cheese in an omelet is pretty darn good. We just I did we just decided uh have omelets this weekend, so two days of omelets using processed tree cheese. Not the USA, but a good guess. Again, that was in what country was processed cheese invented? No, nope, not the USA. That's a good guess, though. It is a European country. A fairly neutral one. Again, in what country was processed cheese invented? And my hint was it's a very neutral European country, not Sweden. Yeah, <laughs> very neutral. Well done, Kenny. And that was, in what country was processed cheese invented? It was invented in 1911 in Switzerland. Next one. What U.S. city boasts the most craft breweries per capita. Again, what U.S. city 
Bose. Or has. Bose would mean maybe they don't have it. What U.S. city has the most craft breweries per capita? Milwaukee's a good guess, but not Milwaukee. Again, that was. What U.S. city has the most craft breweries per capita? <coughs> well done, David. <coughs> Again, that was. What U.S. city has the most... Craft breweries per capita. <coughs> Excuse me. Again, that was what U.S. city has the most craft breweries per capita, and that is Portland, Maine. Next question. What state has the most presidential libraries? Again, what U.S. state has the most presidential libraries? Connecticut. Welcome, Jim. Well done, Ray. Not California. Good guess, David. <coughs> Excuse me. Again. What state has the most presidential libraries? What state has the most presidential libraries? And that is Texas. We're going to stick with the state theme. Next one. In what state was the first location of a white castle? Again. <coughs> you are right, David. I believe that is true. really good with trivia we have been doing uh, he's been coming to my shows for a long long time and thank you for that right again that was in what state was the first location of White Castle I remember when White Castle first opened just down the street from us I was very excited I remember we went there and there was like a four hour wait. And even myself was not gonna wait four hours. Elisa well, wanted nothing to do with that. So we did not go to the White Castle until a little bit later. But that question was, in what state was the first location of White Castle? And the first White Castle was in Wichita, Kansas. That's right. The first White Castle was in Kansas. I always thought of it myself as a place from either Illinois, Michigan. But nope, Kansas. Next question. What is the last name of the person... 
Nice, Ray. Yeah, you're... Oh, you went to... I'll get to the question first. What's the last name of the person America was named for? Again, what is the last name of the person America was named for? Yeah, Ray, you went to, you went to university in Texas. So, it just makes sense you would know that yep tcu i remember well done kenny again that was what's the last name of the person america was named for well done ray That was, what's the last name of the person who America was named for? And that was Vespucci. Amerigo Vespucci. The next question. What is the most mountainous country in the world? And by that, I mean the highest average elevation. Again, that was, what is the most mountainous country in the world? And by that, I mean the highest average elevation. Again, if anybody's able to tip, it is always appreciated. Well done, Kenny. Happy belated, Jimmy. Not Switzerland. I believe Tibet is there. Again, that was. What is the most mountainous country in the world? And by that, I mean the highest average elevation. And that was, what's the most mountainous country in the world with the highest average elevation? That is Bhutan or Nepal. Next one. What were chopsticks originally used for? Again, what were chopsticks originally used for? We had a couple of meals this weekend using chopsticks. One down in Phoenix on Friday that was really, really good. Yeah, they were all good. One in Phoenix was memorable. It rained and we got to run through the rain to our car. It was a fun Arizona evening. Again, that was. What were chopsticks originally used for? Not weaving, but that's a heck of a good guess. It still had something to do with food. Again, that was. What were chopsticks originally used for? <clears throat> Welcome, Robin. And that was, what were chopsticks originally used for? Again, thanks for the jamectomy sessions. Let me use their music. Well done, Ray. You can find this jam on the Funktiquity SoundCloud page. Check it out. 
Again, that was. What were chopsticks originally used for? They were used for cooking. Next one. What is the most widely spoken? Again, what is the most widely spoken Native American language? And that was, what is the most widely spoken Native American language? Jim and Annie, thank you for hanging. And that question again was, what is the most widely spoken Native American language? Well done, Ray. Again, that was, what's the most widely spoken Native American language? And that was, what's the most widely spoken Native American language? And that is Navajo. Again, if anybody's able to tip, super appreciated. Oh, I didn't know that, David. Well then, you were correct as well. Again, that was, the most widely spoken Native American language is Navajo. Anybody's able to tip, it's appreciated. The ways to do so are listed around the speed. And the next question, what kitchen, huh, <clears throat> Ray, that's why I always loved having you at my shows, in particular with the math ones, when I would have to have you explain to everyone how you got there. Ray, I did not know, I did not know that. So well done, David. Thank you for the help, Ray. And the next question. Which kitchen invention took the top prize at the Chicago World Fair in 1893? Again, that was which kitchen invention took the top prize at the Chicago World Fair in 1893? And Ray, I appreciate you being at my shows no matter how and for all the reasons. Danae would have been correct on the last one. <clears throat> Not the ice maker, but a good guess. Again, that was what kitchen invention took the top prize at the Chicago World Fair in 1893. Well done, David. And one more time, that was, which kitchen invention took the top prize at the Chicago World Fair in 1893? Multiple guesses are totally okay. That is the fun of it. Answer as many times as you want. Again, that was, which kitchen invention? I should probably explain that. Yeah, answer as many times as you want, whenever you want. And thank you for asking that. Next one, what kitchen invent, or that one, what kitchen invention took the top prize at the Chicago World Fair in 1893? And that was the dishwasher. Thank you all for hanging out tonight. I really appreciate it. We have fun doing this. I'm glad you have fun joining in. I hope you have a great rest of your Sunday. We're taking next Sunday off to watch the Super Bowl. Um, so I hope you have a great next two weeks. I'll see you in a couple weeks again. Welcome, Janelle. We're just wrapping it up, but thanks for stopping in. Again, I hope you all have a great couple of weeks. I hope you have a great rest of your weekend. May peace be with every single one of you. Thank you very much.